How's it going, Grey Boys? It is week eight of this 2022 season, and we are honestly doing really well. We have finally cracked the top 10 after a win last week against our rivals in the number one Michigan Wolverines in the media poll where we are as high as number five. And we have another ranked matchup today here against another difficult Big Ten team. Penn State is number 21. They're four and one on the season. Uh, and we have to go on the road. We are favored to win there, the higher overall team, but that is almost every single game that we've played so far this season. And we've gone ahead and won five of them. So things are definitely looking good for us. Their offense does seem to be really strong. 12th in points per game, fifth in their rush offense. They're not passing the ball very well. Uh, but they're also not turning the ball over much, so I guess that kind of tracks. Their defense isn't terrible either. Ours is number one, obviously, as it tends to be, but theirs number five with a 15 rush offense and a 10 pass defense. So this is, you know, one of those games that has a chance to be really difficult for us. Their one loss of the season, oh my goodness, how embarrassing to FCS Midwest in week two. They beat a bad Virginia, uh, a bad Iowa, a bad Illinois, and an okay top 20 Nebraska. Um, but that's just, it's not a high strength of schedule so far for them, that's for sure. Compared to us, number 24 UCF, that's a win. Number one Auburn, that's a pretty bad loss, but it's the number one team in the country. Beat the current number four, beat the current number seven. Iowa and Minnesota have both been ranked. We've got Penn State ranked, we've got Ohio State ranked. So, uh, you know, we are nearing the end of the difficult part of our schedule, but we certainly can't let off the gas now. As far as recruiting is concerned, we unlocked ourselves with a couple of really big guys last week, and hopefully it pays off. Christian Grimmel, the 92 overall Juco transfer guard, uh, uh, first of all, is incredible, but now we are 645 points behind Oklahoma with a visit upcoming and we get 15 bonus points more than them a week. So we should be able to kind of eliminate that deficit. Uh, LSU has their visit after us. We might not have to worry about them, but things are looking really, really good for us. It looks like a lot of teams actually uh, used their unlock the door uh, last week. So trying to prevent Oklahoma from picking up an incredible offensive lineman. Elliot Erdman still falling 85 a week. I just don't know after uh, Florida's visit in a couple of weeks what we can do. So it might be time to let go of the dream of the center, but that is what it is. Drew Allen, this 87 overall tight end, we're looking pretty solid with. And Damian Coppett is the other guy that we unlocked. We are, again, gaining about 25 a week here. We don't have a visit. We were unable to schedule one. Not one of the first five to get there. But I think we should at least be able to get to this to the offseason. So all things considered, we're in a really good spot recruiting wise all of a sudden. We don't have a lot of extra points to use this week. Uh, it's just kind of a question. Do we go with uh, Taji McPherson or Jonathan Westerkamp? We are a little bit closer with McPherson, but an athlete maybe can do a little bit more for us. This guy can play in the secondary, it looks like, which I think is a little bit more important than picking up a running back. So we will give those 200 points to the athlete and hopefully we can start to find some more points elsewhere to give to this guy. He's only 24% locked. So we don't have to worry about that at all. And that's uh, a lot of these guys that are pretty high overall are now at, at this point kind of low lock cheese. So we can get our guys that we really want here coming up soon. I think we have a few that uh, we're in the lead with and it's gaining. Um, so once we kind of get these all committed, we can shift those points over to low lock cheese guys and be set up perfectly for that. So let's go ahead and just get into this game. It's an 84 overall for Penn State with an 84 offense and an 83 defense, even though it seemed like their defense maybe was the better unit on that team. Let's go green pants for today and Penn State. I mean, again, one of those teams that you kind of can't really change much. Uh, we could go throwback and you know what? There's just enough change. I like the helmets. We're going to throw them in the throwback uniforms and see what we can do. Trying to defend ourselves as a top 10 team. Again, coming in here, they have a really good offense. Uh, 12th in the nation in points and then top 25 in yards and rushing yards and they are top 15 in every category on defense meanwhile we're top 27 so very close we have two firsts in a second there our defense has been getting it done very much uh, a big 10 team right now but we need to make sure that we stay there this could be big their best player a punter which is great news for us because he's 95 overall and if it was a skill position i would be terrified but 
Uh, the wide receiver, and Winston, injured. Hopefully he's out because we don't want to have to face against that. And then they drop down into the 80s with the George or D George, the right ends. Uh, our guy's still not on hot streaks, and the injury is a pulled groin. So we probably will play against Winston. Uh, I would expect him to want to see the field against the top 10 team. This is a good chance for a player like him to prove himself. So as always, let's just get started here and try to be safe. We don't want any turnovers this game. That's our key. If we can avoid that, I think our defense will be able to give us a couple of opportunities. Try and win this game. Well, here we are. A beautiful day at State College. Beaver Stadium for a top 20 matchup. Or sorry, top 25 matchup. They're not quite good enough for that. Maybe in the media poll. But we are hoping to just continue this winning streak. Tails never fails. And we will go ahead and kick this ball off. We've been receiving it recently. Let's flip the script. Get the ball in the third quarter. And we can just have Clark get this game underway and see what we can do. Very, very excited to just try and put the hammer down on these guys as Ryan Rushing gets tripped into the return man, Tyler Anderson. Uh, that, that's good news for us, really. Not entirely sure what to expect from these guys as I didn't see, I don't remember the name of that one wide receiver, but I didn't see him on the field as they go for the run. We did an okay job of stopping it, but Pennington really just fighting for those extra yards. And as we are getting this first drive underway, I'd like to ask you guys to hit the like button if you enjoy this type of content, and we'll see if we can get a stop. Looks like it's going to be a run up the middle. Oh my gosh, nobody can get off their blocks. Pennington gets hit hard, but not before he picks up 13 yards. Haven't really felt like I could bring the pressure yet, and now four wide receivers expecting the pass. We'll see how the coverage is looking. They will step back to pass, and over the middle, wide open. This Penn State offense is moving really quick. Well, let's get a little bit dangerous, shall we? Trying to bring a blitz. And it is going to be a run. Trying not to overcommit one way or the other. Defense gets him stopped at the line. That's perfect. It's exactly the kind of stop that we need to see. At this stage in the game, second and 10, I could see them going back to the ground. Feels like it's going to be a run to the left, but they hand it off up the middle. Looked like it could have been triple option and... My goodness, J.D. Pollard, the backup running back, comes in and picks up 12 on his first carry. I don't want to say that we're getting embarrassed right now, but it certainly isn't going our favor. This one, a triple option. <laughs> We've got the right bumper fully taking up the screen, but we're able to get to the quarterback and drop him for a loss. Sometimes the formation's a little bit too obvious what they're going to go with. If they haven't had a fullback in all game long and they throw one in looking like that, it's probably going to be a run as they will step back to pass. Kind of expected that, but I left my man open, and he's going to have a comeback route. Ooh, could have been dangerous. Thankfully, we don't give up a first down, but he made that throw on the run. Smith starts this one two of two through the air as they're going to go trips left, and I'm going to try to bring Smith on some pressure. We can't allow this quarterback to have time to think, and we get in his face and hit him, but he completes the pass, and Alex Wynn converts for first down. We had our opportunity, but we're unable to really take advantage of it. And now they're going to be able to step back to throw again. And that time hitting the quarterback, he's forced to throw it away. His first incompletion. Maybe we could hold him to a field goal. Second and 10. The way they've been play calling, this feels like it's going to be a run. And it's an option. They get the pitch out early. Can we get the tackle? Gosh, maybe if my user wasn't so bad. Felt like we could have dropped him at the line, but Pennington gets his five. Going to be up to the defense to try and do something here. We're coming out in a cover six. Hopefully, we could do something with that. They will step back looking to throw, and the quarterback gets sacked. The pressure was just good enough. School record now for sacks in a season for Smith. That is absolutely massive that he's able to pick that one up. And after a quick fall start there, it's now fourth and 16. So everything falling apart at the end of that drive. Kick is up. It looks like it's going to be good. Maybe we had a small chance to block that, but I'm happy to hold these guys just to a field goal on that opening drive. One where we're trying to figure out what they're doing. And that's going to allow our offense now to take the field, unless the special teams has anything to say about it. RJ Rivera did return a kick for a touchdown last week against Michigan. Not going to quite get the blocking there. I went full risk reward there, and it didn't quite pay off. All right, well, let's try to get something else. RJ Rivera just got to get the ball in his hands early on the counter. He gets some nice blocking. The juke move doesn't really do anything to freeze the defense, but still gets five. 
I'd like to get throwing pretty early in this game. Obviously, you guys know that that can be a little bit dangerous. Could be a safety blitz, but we're throwing just a quick screen. Fontenot comes down with it. The blocking is just good enough, and we convert that for a first down. It's a very solid play as we will hand it off up the middle to RJ, but he cuts it outside. 51 with a great tackle to prevent that becoming more than five yards. If I'm the Nittany Lions, though, the thing I'm scared about is he's already averaging five a carry. So if you can't contain that, what do you do? Well, I guess you just bring some pressure up the middle and stuff the run for a loss of three. That makes it a very difficult, very interesting third and seven in our own territory. Looking for Maurice to pass, but it's going to be a scramble first opportunity here as he's going to have plenty of space and we'll get out of bounds. Not trying to get injured on the road. I can just imagine how devastating it would be if we had to play this entire game with Albert Johnson at the helm. I don't know if it would go our way. Uh, RJ trying to run it, only picks up a yard on that first down. We'll see what we can do on this one, second and nine. First quarter really kind of burning out quick. Just throw the dump off to RJ, but man, he's gonna lose three. Just haven't quite been there so far in offense. That puts us in a really tough spot. Third and 12, could be four down territory depending on what happens here. I'm not against just trying to scramble again here, but that's not the pass I wanted to throw and it's intercepted. I hit the wrong button. We hit A, that's a pick six. Oh, that's devastating trying to get there. I got no excuses. It's as simple as that. That's brutal. Well, it's just like that 10 nothing. You know, my what was my key to the game? Don't, don't have turnovers. Don't give the ball away. And that's exactly what we did on the first drive of the offense. And now our, uh, Devin Royal brings it out of the end zone, and it's a bad return. So we were able to pick up 20 yards on the first drive, but that's just not nearly enough as this is going to be the final play of the first quarter. Maurice Tate keeping it. He's got some blocks, and he will slide down for a gain of nine. So 50% of our yards last drive, he's already gained on one play as we will head into the second quarter very quickly here. Down two scores. Things have to turn around at the end of this half if we want to be in this one still. Always feels like we're just so close, but yet so far away from having dominating games every week as our offensive line is not getting a good push early in this game. That's a loss of one on the run up the middle. And if you feel confident about this play, I would love to know who you are because this one terrifies me. Third and two, snapping it under center, stepping back. B is open over the middle, and it's an inaccurate throw. About 10 yards off from Maurice Tate. Fourth and two. We got to punt it away. We cannot risk giving them incredible field position. Got to give the defense a chance to work, so we will try and get this one deep. And it scoots past the return, man. He's going to have plenty of chance, or uh, a great chance to field it, but... We kind of flipped the field position a little bit. I just got to wonder, what can we do to just stop everything? Feels like it's going to be a run. It is a handoff out towards the edge, and it's Napoleon there to get the stop. Stuffed the fat there like some foie gras. And now, second and 13, we can probably expect them to go to the air, try and see what Smith can do getting off the blocks. Could be a screen, but Smith hits him as he's throwing. Oh, that would have been a huge uh, sack. Gets us a third long, though. This is exactly what I'm talking about with the defense. And, man, it really does feel like Big Ten football all over the place for us these days as it is defense first, second, and third as our options. They're going to step back looking to throw. Man open, catches it. Three white jerseys in the area, though, able to bring him down. That'll bring up a three and out for Penn State. The Lions almost being forced here to uh, just punt this one away. They would be foolish to fake that, I think. And it's going to be a returnable ball if we can get some good blocking for RJ Rivera. He needs something to be picked up. He's kind of got the corner. One man misses. He's trying to get outside. Cuts it back inside. Cuts it back to the outside. He's off to the races. Gets shoved out of bounds, but not before 53 yards. He's, he's almost to the Penn State 30. That is the kind of momentum that the special teams of this team continues to bring week in and week out as Maurice Tate will keep it sliding down for a first down gain. Only 33 yards of offense so far, but we have a triple option coming in. I love the triple option with this team, especially if RJ's going to get it. Oh, 
maybe if we keep it inside, there's more. Thought we had the block, but it's a first down nonetheless. That one puts us right on the doorstep of the red zone as Chris Rucker is going to come in motion for the swing screen. The blocking's not there. Can he outrun number 21 or maybe get a little bit of stiff arm cheese inside the 10 for a first and goal? Eight yards, maybe eight and a half to go for us to finally get on the board as we will step back to try and pass RJ out in the flat. I'm not seeing it. RJ over the middle, and he's going to come down with it. Extended his weird route. And that was all too easy, completely uncovered. We've made this just a one-score game pretty quick with 3.13 left in the half. If the defense gets a stop, maybe we could go into the locker rooms with the lead. All of this depends on the defense doing well, though. It feels to me like in most games, either they cause uh, a three and out. Oh, my gosh. Man, Napoleon Sandcastle is maybe one of the best uh, special teams gunners you'll ever see. But to me, it just feels like it's either three and out, we get off the field immediately, or the defense really struggles and maybe can't get off the field at all as there's pressure coming. Try to bring a blitz. It was fully expecting the run. They go with the quick pass and do complete it. Definitely got to be a little bit worried, though, if your Penn State quarterback keeps taking those shots. As, man, I am really worried about the coverage on this one. Pennington in the backfield you never know what he's going to do it's going to be a toss out towards the edge and nobody's able to get there to prevent him from picking up a first down definitely some big bodies on that front line for penn state it's hard to stop this one's going to be a run up the middle london gets off his block but man he got off his block 10 yards downfield been just constantly blitzing expecting these runs but it doesn't know or it doesn't seem like it's really doing enough. This one's going to be handed off and thankfully stopped immediately at the line. Does feel like in some instances, our guys uh, kind of obliterate. It's not often, but when it happens, it works well. This is out of the Wildcat. Going to be a run to the left. And we can't quite get the stop. Pennington took the snap and he's breaking tackles left and right to pick up 18 yards. We knew exactly what they were going to run, but we couldn't do anything to stop it. Now it's a first down. Thankfully, Pennington off the field, but for one play, I don't know if that's going to matter. They will step back, looking to throw quarterback all the time in the world. Throws one up. Could be picked off. Whitaker can't quite come down with it. Oh, man. I said it last episode and last week against Michigan, but that's our defense's biggest problem. They just can't create the turnovers when the opportunity presents itself. What they can do is get sacks, and Courtney Smith gets another one. That is so tremendous. Guy is absolutely unstoppable. All right, third and 15. What can we do as they step back looking to pass? Somebody's going to be open more. Can't get the interception. He does get in front of the ball, causes the fourth down here. And from inside their own territory, snapping the ball at least, they're going to punt this one away. Not expecting to be able to get a return here. Not expecting the fake either because it's 15 yards to go, but... They're trying for the coffin corner. It looks like they got us inside the 20. I guess the question here is going to be, what can we do? A minute and three and a chance to tie or take the lead before the half. And we get the ball to start the third quarter. Stone is going to go on that little swing screen. And great blocking from the wide receiver. Sets him up nicely as I think he got out of bounds. No, we're going to have to go hurry up. Refs say that a knee touched in first, so the clock slowly dwindling away. 45 seconds, Morey State five wide. Going to get outside the pocket. I don't really see anybody open at the moment. And just going to take a couple yards and step out of bounds. We, we let too much time off the clock there. Third and inches as Penn State's coverage felt really solid on that play. But will they be able to stop Chris Rucker on the little corner route? He's going to pick up 12 yards before getting tackled inbounds. But is it going to be enough for them to just keep us out of field goal range? I think we could probably hit a 45-yarder. I don't know what the wind's doing. Trying to get outside the pocket. A tough one, but it's RJ Rivera found in some open space. And he's going to be right there on the doorstep of the field goal range. Definitely looking to take a timeout, but we got to run one play while the clock is stopped here. And it's going to be Stone coming in motion for a little wide receiver. Triple option. And Maury State can just go right up the middle, and we will take our timeout there. Uh, second and one, 18 seconds left. We've got this momentum, but we got to be careful not to throw it away. Maurice and RJ feeling pretty warm at this point in the game, but it's A over the middle. Curtis Bryan comes down with it for a first and goal. 
We have definitely had some struggles in converting these. What can we do? Play action, stepping back. Just got to give it to the big boy, Robertson. Gets into the end zone. Dropped the shoulder and the fullback said, I got you. Maurice Tate, 9 of 11 through the air, and we're going to take a four-point lead into the half. Well, I am actually going to try something. You guys know that I get a little bit crazy sometimes. We're just going to squib this right at them, and who knows? Maybe something happens where they try to go for a really long field goal. Six seconds? I don't know. I'm kind of hoping for a pick six either. Just curious. They could run the football here. Wouldn't be too surprising, but yeah, they will step back. It's a Hail Mary. What can we do to stop them? Quarterback just heaves it up. Whitaker dropped it. He was the only one there. If that's what it looks like when their quarterback tries to throw deep, no wonder. They've been trying to just uh, run with the football as much as possible. That's so disappointing. It's another one. This quarterback might have the worst arm strength I've ever seen. We can't do anything with it, though. Oh, man, that's a shame. Could have had a chance for maybe some more points. But it's 14 unanswered to end the half and allows us to take the lead. As we head back into the locker rooms, feeling pretty confident. Maurice and RJ firing on all cylinders. And they get the ball to work with first in the second half. So if we can go out and just punch Penn State in the mouth one more time, take a lead as, oh, I don't know what was going on in that replay. A little bit of uh, brotherly love, though, as, uh, man, defense is on fire. Offense is now starting to groove. And once we get into this spot, it is hard for any team to get the stop. Oh, let's just go ahead and get it underway. Definitely taking this out. I don't care how deep in the end zone we are. We don't get a whole lot of opportunities to return, and they got that lucky little tackle. There was some space for RJ to work with. Maurice and RJ still looking good. Uh, Maurice absolutely on fire, but we're going to give it to RJ. Let him bounce to the edge. Spin move doesn't do anything. He did break a tackle. He gets two yards in the process. The one thing that I have to be careful with is just not getting in over my head. Sometimes this is the spot where I try to do too much, like right here, but Stone comes down with that. Able to user him into position for a good catch, but that was definitely risky. I was hoping it to just, uh, you know, uh, throw that one deep on the play, but they brought too much pressure. How about Derek Bentley? Third and two, kind of the big guy that you want running in that situation, and the offensive line got a good enough push, so we get another first down. Let's utilize this read option. Maury State's on fire. I feel like we got to continue to feed the hot hand. And a huge juke, he breaks the tackle and he gets the first down. That safety, I don't know what he was doing. He might have had his eyes closed. We are already at the 40-yard line looking across midfield as we go play action, rolling outside the pocket, waiting, waiting, waiting. Right bumper's open if we can get it to him. Goodwin, maybe some pressure from the safety. and oh, I lobbed it. I think if we throw a bullet pass, it's complete. Just a tough situation. Good awareness from the safety on that one to go and break the play up and I don't know I don't think that we can run the play that I'm wanting to run so we are going to look deep again it's a slip screen oh what the heck am I doing we got to call the right plays in this situation as uh, so we send Rucker deep and oh my goodness I'm struggling to make the audibles pressure coming off the edge B is wide open nobody's going to be able to get to Chris Rucker if he catches it in stride and that's too easy of a touchdown Oh, 165 passing yards. Maurice Tate, three incompletions, but three touchdowns. 21 to 10. I mean, there was just nobody doing anything there. This feels like a game where earlier in the season we would be putting in our second string for a lot of it. But because I don't want to have any of that bull crap that we've had in the other games, you know, where we put our second string in and the other team tries as hard as they can to make it close, we're just going to keep the foot on the gas here. This one definitely does feel like one where we might try to burn the clock a little bit. But again, not trying to do too much. First and 10, a big eye formation. They're going to hand it off out towards the edge, and their running game is really strong. Brought the zone blitz on that play, and even that wasn't enough, which is a little bit worrisome. Again, looking for a run this time. It's Logan getting into the backfield to stand up the backup, J.D. Pollard. That's a loss of two. And it is going to be third and five now for these guys. So what can we do to try and slow this down? Just need to defend over the middle. And the quarterback takes another sack. He almost had guys coming open, but that's just too long to have to defend against our de defensive line. Smith takes Troy Carter's uh, school record for sacks in a season that he just set last year. 
14, and he's got so many games to play. It's kind of incredible that uh, you can replace that kind of talent so easily occasionally in this game. And they're going to have to punt the ball away, and you already know. With the blocks, I just feel so confident. I feel like this is a touchdown, and it looks like it could be RJ Rivera. Only a couple guys to beat. Can he get the corner one to beat? Stayed inside, but couldn't stay on his feet. I just didn't know. I don't think we could have got it along the sideline, but he gets a first and goal for us. I guess we'll see what Derek Bentley can do. Kind of wish RJ was getting this one as we run it out towards the edge, waiting for the blocks, getting north, and Bentley falls forward to get to the one-yard line. Man, everybody on offense doing their job. And now it's time for Robertson to get his second touchdown of the day as we're going fullback dive, and there's no opposition to that one. All too easy for him. If nothing else, at this point, we are definitely proving that we are a top 10 team besides our overall, you know, or despite our overall, maybe. Avery Binkley doing a good job gunning down on the kickoff. At this point, we just got to wonder, uh, I don't know what it is the Penn State can do. We know their quarterback just isn't very good. Can we get the stop? Feels like it's going to be a run out towards the edge, and it's stuffed. Brought pressure. It's too, too one-dimensional of an offense for the Nittany Lions. It's very interesting because their quarterback is the thing that's holding them back. They have good wide receivers, and those wide receivers are getting open quite often, but they just can't find anybody open, uh, at least deep downfield there. They're having some success with the short little slants and crossing routes, but that's about it. So we've got these guys in a third down. Could be a little bit worried about the run, but not too much. Just trying to watch anything too easy. And it's a slip screen. Sims gets the tackle, though. I didn't even have to do anything on that one. Was not paying attention to what was happening behind the line. But I didn't need to. The rest of the defense has my back. And that's another quick three and out. You think he can do it again? RJ almost scored on the last kick return or the last punt return. You never know. He's got a lot of space to work with if he can just get the right blocks. I'm going to try to switch directions on this field. Cutting through the middle. And RJ Rivera is having himself a day. Nobody's going to be there to stop him if there's no flags on the field. It's a 70-yard punt return. A thing of beauty. The blocking was phenomenal. Penn State is dejected. And there is nothing they can do to prevent Eastern Michigan from getting into the end zone. I'm honestly almost tempted just to go for like an onside kick or two. A minute left in the third quarter, it's 35 to 10. And man, since that uh, early barrage of scoring from Penn State, our pick six, they haven't done anything. It's just 100 total yards at this stage of the game for these guys. And I don't know if it's gonna be much better. They're gonna try to run this one, nothing doing. Avery Rawls there to drop him for a loss of three. And now they have less than 100 yards of total offense. Pennington, the only bright spot on the offense, but when it's that one dimensional, you start to learn how to stop it. And I'm gonna bring pressure. This is going to be a pass. Smith getting in there, hits the quarterback. That was a really good catch by Douglas Thomas. Gets him a manageable third down. Well, we're gonna try to press up here with the coverage, trying to do the same thing. Third and four, expecting the pass. It is going to be a pass. Too much time for the quarterback. He's sliding around the pocket. He gets rid of it and he's got a completion. We had the sack. The first really good thing that he's done all game long. Actually, that might be, no. I, I was going to say the backup, but no. Just gets it done. Kudos to him. That was a good play. I do think the press worked surprisingly well. This feels like it's going to be a run to Pennington. But, well, that's the end of the third quarter. So, clock running thin for the Nittany Lions as they're down 25. And we have absolutely turned on the afterburners. I don't think there's anything they can do to stop us. But I guess we'll take a look. Fourth quarter. One more to play. Let's just finish it. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I feel really cool uh, with those uh, between quarter uh, little monologues. Sometimes they don't end so well. That one, uh, kind of the ladder. There's a big sack, though. Oh, my gosh. Courtney Smith, he's going to be feeling it tomorrow. That's for sure. Linton Whitfield, the man making the big sack on that one. And, again, now we're at the, the stage of the game where you're just expecting... Uh, pass after pass after pass. Out route. Get some five yards, but it's still third long. And as a little peek behind the curtain, I do do those uh, mid-quarter things one shot live. So I don't really have an opportunity to, uh, you know, mess up when I'm going off the cuff as... Give it to Pennington. He gets nine yards, but it's fourth and four. They're going to go for it, as they should. This is the right decision. 
Can we get the stop is the question. Four wide. Running back in the backfield if we can get pressure on the quarterback. Or if Whitaker can just swat it away from the running back. They wanted to go to the man who's done it all for them. We said no. First and ten. A chance to score some more points here. Whitaker absolutely burned him. You know the big problem here? Maurice State hasn't been on the field for a while, so no longer on fire. We're looking for a big play-action bomb, but I don't know if we're going to have anybody open. B is there if he can get it. Jody Gentry comes down with it. Oh, my goodness. It's just uh, we're playing against the high school team at this point. It's so funny to me how week in and week out, we get a completely different Maurice State at every single game as we'll just go with the quick little dump off to Chris Rutger for yet another first down. I'm very conflicted right now as to whether or not we just try to run up the score as much as possible on this game or if we try to burn through the clock a little bit and hopefully avoid injuries. I mean, we're at least going to score as easily as we can on this drive. Chris Rutger, by the way, has over 100 yards receiving on five catches, but, uh, man, things are looking really good. Trying to run it out towards the edge. RJ Rivera gets the blocking, and we, the patience pays off for him. It's a flag down. This is going to be a clipping, isn't it? Oh, that's such a bummer. I could see it. That's a 50-50 call in this game. It erases a touchdown, and Jeremy Robertson gets called for that one. The way I see it, that just allows the offense to pick up a couple of more yards. Uh, <laughs> backs us up 15. Try the read option here. Maurice Tate keeping it running right up the middle. Makes the safety miss, and Maurice Tate deserves the big rushing touchdown, and he's going to take it to the house. 99 rushing yards for the team as Maurice scores his fourth touchdown of the game. Four minutes still left in this game. I think we could potentially score two more touchdowns, but from here on out, we're just going to burn the clock. Again, uh, it's nice to be able to score. It feels good. It helps with our stats. It helps our players look better. But the last thing we need is, is an injury on this team. So, again, 404. Penn State's offense not found, at least not in this second half, as they are going to get a nice completion. Whitaker got the deflection to end their drive last time, but he's going to get burned on the out route this time. And, gosh, Logan, we have him in that kind of robber. We're going to go bring some pressure with him, though. I like trying to bring pressure on this quarterback. It feels like it's been working pretty well. Never mind on that one. <laughs> Didn't have the momentum. I got caught running out towards the side still. And uh, we're going to just throw it over the middle for another first down. It is kind of telling to me that uh, that's the only thing they have going for them. As uh, instead of bringing Logan, we're going to bring Royal. We are going to have uh, cover zero on this play. We know they're going to step back to pass in. Royal, it works out. We get there. Man, they had guys open. They had guys wide open on the right side of the field for easy touchdowns. Worked in our favor, though. We're just going to have to hopefully make the right reads on this one. Again, not bringing too much pressure, hoping to find something. They're going to run the ball on second and 16. Maybe not the worst decision. Caught us off guard, gained five yards. Problem is now it's going to be third and 10. And we have all the play for it, so I'm not too worried about this one. Step off with green. Just don't want to get torched on an out route. They're going over the middle. Whitaker, <laughs> four deflections for Chris Whitaker. <laughs> you got to hold on to one of them. I'm really curious. Maybe he doesn't know the rules. Maybe he thinks he's not allowed to catch the football. Because that's the only explanation at this point. As Is this Jody Gentry? Is Jody Gentry going to have a chance at a really good kick return? Oh, that was pretty close. It was pretty close. Well, 2.33 left in this game, and it's time for us to start burning the clock. Derek Bentley's going to get a carry. Up the middle on this one, and I'm not saying we're not going to pass the ball here, but we do want to make sure that we're getting positive yards. Maurice State's still on fire. We're going to allow him to continue to run, potentially. We'll see how they cover this. Oh, does he have the speed? No. Can't escape the linebacker. It's five yards, keeps the clock moving. And at this point, I want to keep running with Maurice because he's got 80 yards on eight carries. Uh, that would be pretty sick if he picks up 100 on the day. This could be his chance, but we're going to go for the really late pitch out to Goodwin, who stays in bounds, picks up 18 yards in the process. Good job from Lionel. These option plays working really well. 144 total yards for Penn State. We are well over 300, and it's going to be more to come as Maurice ha hits the spin move. Jukes out the linebacker. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm letting him take too many hits here, though. So that's going to be it, thankfully, for this game. 
I am going to have to snap the ball. Well, no, we don't have to snap the ball one more time, but we're going to anyways, and we'll see if maybe we can just find uh, a free touchdown deep downfield off of the play action, or maybe a pick, or just give it to Stone. Did I feel like they covered that pretty well deep. Uh, I don't know. I might have missed something, but positive yards continues to make us look good, and what a game on the road against the number 21 team in the country, and we came out and showed that we belong and at least the discussion for the playoffs. Maurice Tate had one of the best games I think I've seen out of him. Started a little bit slow, but that's pretty typical for him. Once he started going, there was nothing uh, that they could have done to stop him. Uh, just take away that pick six that is really my fault for throwing, and it's a near-perfect game. 42-10 to 10 at the end of it, and again, they started okay, but, I mean, all their offense did was get a field goal. We gave them a pick six, and then from then uh nothing happened for their offense or really for their defense 14 points for us in the second quarter 21 in the third and seven in the fourth but i think we all know that it could have been a lot more uh especially in that fourth quarter nine first downs for them 47 rushing yards 97 passing yards meanwhile we have 130 on the ground and 221 through the air uh the one interception is the only bad spot and speaking of maurice tate gets player of the game 15 of 18 for that 221 yards, plus nine carries for 86 yards and four total touchdowns. George Smith, the right end, gets defensive player of the game honors as he gets two sacks on the way to setting a new school record, taking it away from the man who came before him last year. So that just gives us another win. We are now bowl eligible. I don't know if we were to lose out, that would be really important. Obviously it would take a disaster for that to happen, but you never know. Six and one, we can go ahead and advance the week on the road another big game uh at ohio state it has been just big game after big game it feels like this entire season we do get locked out by uh quavian davis a mediocre uh outside linebacker a couple guys ready to visit but then just continuing to see uh recruiting battles all over the place certainly not going to be easy uh good amount of xp and we move up one spot to number seven as Ohio State moves up, I think, one spot to number 12. So there must have been somebody up in front of us losing. Auburn, number two in the country. Did they get jumped or did they lose? They beat Texas A&M, but they get jumped by Stanford, who beat, uh, it must have been a top 10 Notre Dame because uh, Fighting Irish fall down to number 14 after losing by one point in the Stanford Cardinal, 8-0. Auburn, 6-0. USC, 7-0. So USC-Stanford could be a really, really big game. We are behind other one-loss teams, Clemson, Oklahoma, and Texas, who are in front of Michigan, Florida, Georgia, and Tennessee. Uh, so, yeah, Notre Dame drops five spots after the loss, and Purdue at number 15 loses to Nebraska. Penn State drops down to 24 after losing to us, and Wisconsin and Georgia Southern both drop out of the rankings. Now, I guess what matters to me is uh, the media poll. We're still fifth there, which is really good. No first place votes for us. And the BCS poll, which uh, in the CFP revamp mod should say CFP poll. It should be the college football playoff poll. It has a sixth. And this is one that's really important for an at-large bid if we don't manage to win the uh, the conference. And, man, looking at it, I just noticed Oklahoma barely beats Kansas in overtime. So that's a pretty crazy one for them. Uh, we're rooting for Coastal this week. If they can take out Auburn, that's good news because it helps us move up. Although Auburn being the one team to beat us, it's conflicting. I think we got to root for Coastal, though, just for the heritage. Well, that's a pretty solid game for us as we are favored to win against the higher overall Ohio State. But unfortunately, that's going to have to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed this one, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. You know, I say it every time and every YouTuber says it every time, but it really does help the channel succeed and grow. So I appreciate everybody that does hit the like button. After you've done that, leave a comment letting me know what you thought about the game. And if you think we can run the table at this point, you know, we've shown some really, really strong outings recently. So it feels like we're in our groove. Um, after that, though, you can head down to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. It's also links to my Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and our community Discord, as well as the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Gray Boys, wherever you are. Have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios! Special thanks to our Tier 3 members, Durham Finch, Avery Binkley, and Warmaster777.